Hello, Mr. Price here, and this is your video on the practice PLT for Year 8. This one is a mixed set of questions based on the questions that you should have done uh, last year, and is a bit of a refresher. Let's go straight in. Um, however, I do want to apologise. There is a slight mistake in the sheet you might have gone, um, so you just need to correct that one. I'm sorry about that. That should be a 9 rather than a 10. Uh, if you've got an updated sheet, you don't have to worry. That 9 should already be there otherwise. Okay, we're going to look at question 1. So we are being asked to calculate 3 plus 2 times in brackets 5 plus 2. Okay, and this is without a calculator. So um, I know that um, I want to do bits inside the bracket first. So I'm going to evaluate the 5 plus 2. And that gives me 7. And I'm going to bring down everything else that I haven't yet touched. So I've got the 3 plus 2 times my answer to 5 plus 2. OK. I'm then going to, once I've done my brackets, there are no indices to uh, look at. There were no powers. And you're going to look at any multiplication and division. And remember, those can be done in either order. Now, I've got a multiplication sum here, 2 times 7. So this now needs to be evaluated to 7 times 2, 14. OK, now notice how I put my evaluation underneath where it was before, almost like a pyramid shape. OK, and I'm going to bring down the sum that I haven't done yet. So I haven't done this 3 plus yet, but I've evaluated 2 times 7 to give me 14. So I'm now to 3 plus 14, and that finally leaves me with 17. And there's my final answer. OK. Observe how I've set that out. There are no equal sign, but that's OK. I've evaluated my answer all the way, and I've got my final answer at the end there. Let's look at question two. I'm being asked for 6 minus 3 multiplied by 2 plus 9 divided by 3, like so. OK. Now... There are no brackets here, but there are invisible brackets because, as you can see, this division sign is underneath everything. So all of this on the top line happens first before we divide by 3. OK, so I'm going to use my uh, bracket indices multiplication division and addition of subtraction rule, but only on the top line because all this has been divided by 3. So I'm going to evaluate my multiplication first. So 3 times 2 is equal to 6, and that 3 times 2 becomes a 6. I'm left with plus 9, and then 6 take away. So that 6 take away is brought down. The 3 times 2 becomes 6. The plus 9 stays as it is, and then that's all divided by 3. OK, now here I've got a choice. I can either divide everything here by 3, or I can just evaluate this top line. It doesn't really matter. Uh, I'm going to evaluate the top line. So 6 take away 6 is 0, and 0 plus 9 is 9. So I'm left with 9 divided by 3. And then 9 divided by 3 is equal to 3. And that's my final answer for question 2. OK. I'm then be given a, a fraction question. 3 twentieths multiplied by... 5 sixths. OK, now you've got a choice here. You can either multiply the tops and the bottoms and then simplify, or we could do this much more efficient method. So I'm going to show that I'm multiplying the tops, 3 times 5 on the top, and then 20 times 6 on the denominator, 20 times 6. Now before I evaluate top and bottom, I'm going to look for common factors. OK, numbers that go into top, a set of numbers that go into the top and the bottom. So I notice this 3 and this 6 can be divided by 3. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to divide this by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. I'm going to divide this by 3. 6 divided by 3 is 2. OK, I can do the same with this 5 and this 20. OK, what goes into 5 and 20? 5 does. So I'm going to divide this by 5. 5 divided by 5 is 1. I'm going to divide this by 5. 20 divided by 5 is 4. 
Okay, I can now multiply my new numbers. So 1 times 1 equals 1, and then 4 times 2 is 8. So my answer is an eighth. Okay, let's try that again with question 4. So I have 7 over 12 multiplied by 18 over 35. Okay, same thing again. I'm going to show that I want to multiply the tops, the uh, numerator, and multiply the denominators. Now, before I multiply these sums, I'm going to look for common factors. Now, um, let's have a look. So I know that 7 and 35 share of um, factors. Uh, 7 goes into both. So I'm going to divide this by 7. 7 divided by 7 is 1. I'm going to divide 35 by 7. 35 divided by 7 is 5. Okay. And now 12 and 18, you might be tempted to say, well, 12 doesn't go into 18 or etc. But it doesn't matter. Okay. Now here... I notice that 6 goes into 12 and 6 goes into 18. So I'm going to divide 18 by 6. I've got 3. And I'm going to divide 12 by 6. I have 2. So now I'm left with 1 times 3 on the, on the numerator, 3. 2 times 5 on the denominator, 10. My answer is 3 tenths. OK, question 5. We were asked for the area of this parallelogram with a side length of 9 centimetres. So there's a slight technical issue there. Um, this parallelogram of 9 centimetres and 5 centimetres. Now you might be asking there, wait a minute, why is he calling that a parallelogram? It's clearly a rectangle. Now uh, this is true. But actually, a uh, rectangle this is just a special parallelogram. As you can see, these sides are parallel. These sides are parallel. Whoops, that should only have one arrow. Okay, and if it's a quadrilateral with two pairs of parallel sides, it's a parallelogram. Okay, uh, the fact that it's a rectangle uh, really doesn't matter. The, the way to find the area of parallelogram is to do the uh, width multiplied by the perpendicular height. In other words, the two lengths are at right angles to each other. Okay, so I can say the area of this parallelogram is equal to the length multiplied by the perpendicular width. Okay, now um, in this case, my area of the length, so the length is 9 centimetres or 5, it really doesn't matter which way you look at it. And the width is 5 centimetres, so therefore my area of a parallelogram is 9 times 5, 45, and do not forget the units. That's 45 centimetres squared, because uh, these were in centimetres. And if you multiply centimetres by centimetres, you get centimetres squared. Okay, the other question we had was this right angle to triangle. So we have my length here of 6 centimetres. This one was 8 centimetres. And this one was 10 centimetres. OK, so my, um, the way that I find the area of a triangle is the length multiplied by the perpendicular height or you can also call that base if you prefer, all divided by 2. OK, so it's a bit like how you find the area of a parallelogram. You do the two lengths or right angles to each other, but this is half of a parallelogram. See, if I put in that dotted line there, add an extra triangle in, we get a parallelogram or rectangle. So uh, we want to halve the area of our parallelogram. So now we put in our uh, units, so the area of the triangle is the base, 6 centimetres, multiplied by the perpendicular height, so that's the two lengths of right angles to each other, so the 8 is right is uh, perpendicular to the 6 centimetre line, so 6 times 8, all divided by 2. Okay, now here you've got a choice, 
you could multiply the 6 by the 8 and then divide your answer by 2. Or actually, it's a lot easier if we just did the technique we did for our fraction question. And notice, hang on, I can divide one of these numbers by 2 and this by 2. So it doesn't really matter which number you choose. I'm going to choose the 8. So this 8 can be divided by 2, and I get 4. And that 2 can be divided by 2, and I get 1. So it's going to be 6 times 4 divided by 1. Divided by 1 makes the number stay the same. So 6 times 4, uh, 6, 6, 6, 6, 24, 24 centimetres squared. OK. Now, let's have a look at section 2. This was more of an extension, so well done if you did these at home. So this is section 2. Uh, question 1. OK, so I was asked to put in the brackets, so I've got 10 subtract 4 divided by 1 plus 3 equals 9. So, um, sometimes you can just see it, sometimes it requires a little playing around. Now, um, I've noticed that I've got my 10 here, and I've got a subtraction here, so chances are I'm going to want to try and make this 1. OK, this little bit here wants to become 1, so 10 minus 1 equals 9. Now, can I do this? I actually can, because if I do this 1 plus 3 first, that becomes 4, and then 4 divided by 4 is 1. So then I want to do that bit. OK, now this might, you might have seen this for the first time, where you've got brackets within brackets, um, but I can do this. So I want to do this bit first, I want to do the 1 plus 3 first, and then I want to divide all of this by the 4. So 4 divided by whatever this is, this bit comes next. So I put all that in brackets, so then I've got 10 minus this 4 divided by 4 here, which becomes 10 minus 1, which is 9. OK, that was tricky. Well done if you got that at home. OK, and in part B, I have 60 divided by 2 add 5 multiplied by 2 squared uh, equals 25. OK, again, this is just something you can either see or you can't. Now, um, I know that this 60 is going to want to be divided by something to get it somewhere around 25. Now, let's have a look. Now, here I notice that I can actually get 12 by doing 5 times 2 is 10 plus 2. And if I divide 60 by 12, I'm going to get 5. OK, and I've got this squared here. And it's a 5 multiplied by itself gives me 25. So this squared is going to want to happen last. So I want to do all of this first. OK, so 5 times 2 is 10. 10 plus 2 is 12. I then want to divide this 60 by the 12. So then this happens next. So then 60 divided by the 12 will give me 5. And then the squared happens at the end. 5 multiplied by itself gives me 25. OK, that was a very tricky question. It was, it was more of an extension. If you're still having trouble with either of those, come and see me and I can give you some extra help. OK, my final question is, I know that 25% is 15. OK, so 25% of something is 15. So I can say 25% is 15. OK, and I want to know what 10% equals to. OK, so I've got a few areas that I can do this. I'm just going to make myself e my life easier. I know that I can get to a fairly nice number such as 100% by multiplying the 25% by 4. OK, so I'm going to do the same to the 15. So if 25% equals 15, if I multiply 25% by 4, I get 100%. So 15 times by 4 gives me 60. OK, I then want to go from 100% to 10%. That's nice and simple, because I know to go from 100% to 10%, I divide by 10, so divide 
this by 10, and I'm going to get 6. And that is my final answer. Okay. I hope that was useful. If there's any bits of the video that you've watched and watched again and still not quite sure what I did, come and see me and we can sort that out for you. That's Mr. Price all finished and I'll see you in class.